Kendrick Lamar just silenced all his doubters. After two weeks of silence, Kendrick Lamar finally responded, and I gotta say that the track is awesome. And honestly, man, I don't know for how long he's been cooking up this, because this is like an essay disc. Because this is a character of analysis of Drake, and most importantly, why Kendrick hates Drake. Dementia must run in his family, but let it get shaky. I park his son. So let's just get into it, man. This beef really started all the way back in 2013 with the release of Control, a track where Kendrick Lamar essentially called out the hip hop world for a battle. And though most people understood it and even cooked up their own responses, there was one person who was really upset about it, and he goes by the name of Drizzy Drake. Ever since then, it's been understood that the two do not fuck with each other, especially with the amount of sneak disses that both camps threw at each other. But a rapper with a ghost rider. What the fuck happened? However, in big 2024, sneak dissing was not enough. Kendrick directly dissed Drake and J. Cole to a certain point. But J. Cole apologized, so we don't really care about him. Which obviously meant that Drake needed to respond, and so he did on the song Push Up. When Drake released Push Ups, I think everybody knew that there had to be a response. And it was more of a matter of if, not when. However, said response took a while, at least long enough for Drake to use it against Kendrick, specifically on the track Taylor made Freestyle, where Drake essentially bullied Kendrick for not dropping a response. Kendrick, we need ya, the West Coast savior. But Taylor made Freestyle is also important in that Drake disses himself, he does the Eminem 8 Mile type thing and kind of eliminate some certain disses that Kendrick Lamar can use, and it honestly looked like Kendrick Lamar had no ammunition to hit Drake with. They was saying the only stepping Kendrick Lamar does is running away. And there's been rumors flying all over the place from a mythical track from four years ago that Drake alluded to, to Kendrick's response possibly being the heart part sits, to a possible Kendrick Lamar album disc being in the works. However, as we now know, Kendrick finally responded. And it's time to put all those rumors to bed and talk about what's really going on. So let's talk about Euphoria. And before we get into the song, let's talk about that title because am I crazy or isn't Euphoria a show about minors? Now personally, I'm just making a connection, but the connection has to be made. Still though, it's not something that he brings up on the track, which I think is smart. Uh, in Taylor made freestyle, Drake kind of did that Eminem 8 Mile type thing where he dissed himself so Kendrick couldn't use it as ammunition. And it seems like Kendrick avoided most of the disses that Drake <laughs> dissed himself with, so... Hey, I'd personally say that's a good play. The first part starts with Kendrick bringing up Drake's most memorable part of his past and bringing up that he's an act, which is interestingly used as the track goes on as it's used to plant the seed that Drake is not really a man of the culture as much as he pretends to be a man of the culture. But before he further goes into Drake, he goes at his fans by saying, while calculate you, not as calculated, I can't even predict your angels. Which is not that crazy of a bar, but still, I gotta acknowledge that. Kendrick continues with that whole Drake is acting, being part of the culture more than he is part of the culture, by bringing up Tommy Hilfiger and FUBU. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never had been your collection. The implied thing here being that FUBU is owned by black people, Tommy Hilfiger is not and that Drake clearly prefers one over the other. Honestly though, this part of the track is too pacified for me. So let's get to the beat. Yeah, I'm out the way, yeah, I'm low, okay. Yeah, the island right here is remote, okay. I ain't thinking and the first few bars of this are okay, but let me get to the real deal here. Cause Kendrick tells this story about the first time he shot a Draco. As Kendrick says, the very first time I shot me a Drake, the homie had told me, aim it this way. I didn't point down enough, today I show you, I learned from those mistakes. Which I think is a great way of just saying, I'ma throw shots at you and they're gonna hit. And not too long after that, of course, Kendrick Lamar goes at Drake for the Tupac AI thing. But hold on, hold on, hold on, he keeps going. Cutthroat business, you got shit twisted, what is it, the braids? Oh my god, this is elite wordplay man i was living for this man i wanted this anyways then kendrick calls back all the way back to the beginning of this beef and talks about what happened with control anyways this is what kendrick lamar has to say about it now 10 years later i heard your finish you don't work with me no more okay at this point i don't think it needs explaining but 
if there was someone who took issue with that song, it was Drake. And life is optics, but it really made him seem sensitive. I feel like he made a decision, you know what I'm saying? And it was a decision to make. You know, he was like, man, I'm either going to go for this moment because I know it's going to be a big moment, or I'm going to, like, take heed to the fact that I have real relationships and I'm going to, like, not do that. I don't know if I necessarily respect it. The next few lines I kind of don't like a lot just because, like, why do it in a song? But it's basically Kendrick Lamar saying, I'm not really beefing, at least with Cole. I hate Drake. I hate his clothes. I hate his car. I hate his women. I hate his abs. As a matter of fact, we hate Drake. We, as in the whole culture does. You're not black enough and, 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 and you a liar. But I do like when he sings though. I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he act tough. Which, honestly, I get it. I should also say that in the midst of all of this, he also presses Drake for like not responding to Pusha T, which I think is fair. It also points out the hypocrisy of Drake because Drake has been the guy that's been like, Kendrick, you gotta respond to me. But he hasn't replied to Pusha T in five years. Like, what are we saying, dog? Anyways, moving forward, Kendrick goes at Drake for like his lack of maturity I'm knowing they call you the boy but where's a man cuz I ain't seen him yet but I think the funniest bar of the track is when he says when I see you stand by sexy red I believe you see two bad bitches <laughs> going back to push ups a big part of Drake dissing Kendrick was that Drake was saying Kendrick was doing the splits essentially making fun of his contract situation and Kendrick responds by pointing the finger at Drake Let's speak on percentage show me your splits I'll make sure I double back with you because Drake was very famous for being the guy that was signed to another guy that was signed to another guy and another guy so really who was doing the splits which honestly felt very uncreative like Pusha T already did this but you know I get it where I think the track hits its peak though is when Kendrick Lamar brings up Drake as a parent essentially saying this rap shit is just rap shit it's not real life I'm more busy parenting which I know you can't relate to this whole shit I got a son to raise but I can see you don't know nothing about that and regardless of how much of a father you think Drake is to his kid uh I think Kendrick has a point at least with all the touring Drake does and all the flying he's doing from city to city, I think it'd be hard for Drake to relate to Kendrick Lamar's parenting. But now we see that Kendrick is indeed like that. As he ends this song with a warning to Drake to let's keep a rap and not include family in it because it will get nasty. And last but not least, Kendrick says, Hey Drake, you can't even say the n-word, which as a mixed man myself, I don't know if I can comment on that. So I won't. And with that, Kendrick's response is finally in the books. And call me crazy, but this is like a top 15 diss track of all time. Usually because diss tracks are very uncreative, but I think Kendrick Lamar approached this very freshly, and it's really good. Just for the record though, I still like Drake. I got him in the top 20 diss tracks too. But I will say I am excited to see how he responds. The ball is definitely on his court, and all we gotta do is wait now. Anyways, with that being said, I woke up to the news that Kendrick Lamar dropped, and then I had to miss class, so hopefully that was worth it. Uh, shout out to Jay Dilla, shout out to Kendrick Lamar, shout out to Drake, even shout out to J. Cole, and shout out to God, man. Yeah.